I was given a book for Christmas and I would like to review this aforementioned book, which is A Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. Now, I'd never heard of this book or even this author, but as I said, a family friend gave it to me for Christmas and it's such a pretty little book, but she described it as a feel good book. Now, I don't know if she'd read the book or if she just saw it and thought of me. I mean, English student, what's a good present? <laughs> now, I don't really have time to read books very often, being in English degree section of things, but I have sat and read this book from Boxing Day till today. Um, it's 207 pages long. It's not, like, stodgy. It's really easy to read. You may wonder why it still took me four days, but hey, I feel no pressure right now. I'm trying to just take things slowly while I'm in the holidays. So, the nitty gritty of the book. Well, when I started to read, I wondered why it was described to me as a feel good book. I felt very sad all of a sudden. But, you know, it was the introductory pages were a mixture of funny, sad, <laughs> feel good and weird. I mean, the man, Oswald, the main character of the book, and I say main character quite loosely because he starts as the focal point but it kind of distributes itself evenly once he moves away from Chicago. Anyway, he moves away from Chicago because he goes to the doctor, has a checkup as he does as an old man, don't want to explain the nitty gritty but we I just said the nitty gritty already. This is, I've I said the phrase one time and now I'm saying it twice. Anyway, I won't get into the details of the procedure of the little, the little checkup he had done, but I think you know what I mean. It isn't described quite <laughs> like how I'm putting it, but you know, he's not well is basically the result. And so he, his option is to stay and die in Chicago or move away and perhaps live a little longer where the air is clearer and the weather is better for him. Yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to talk about the plot too much from then on. What really happens is him settling into this new place in Lost River and finding a routine and a hobby and friends and... The story, as I said, kind of becomes more about everybody individually. Jack, the red bird, um, Roy, the little feud between sides of the river and Patsy, the little girl that doesn't really have a family. I don't know. I don't really want to talk about it as much as I want to talk about it because it's such a strange little book. It's a story that doesn't really have any life-changing, I don't know, there's not one solid plot. So if you were looking for one specific thing, this book might have it, but it has a multitude of things within it, and that's why I'm kind of thinking that you should read it. It's It's got a little bit of everything, um, maybe not everything, but well worth a read. Um, it definitely is a feel-good book, so I'm going to cop out and give you that as my little all-encompassing phrase for it. It's a feel-good read. And it's definitely lovely if you read it around Christmas like I have, but don't think it detracts from it if you read it at any other time of the year, because it does cover more than Christmas guess that kind of spoils that Oswald survives at least the Christmas that he is expected not to. But, um, yeah. Oswald's a great little character and the way that this book is written, even not just about the characters, like the, the physical nature of the world is so beautiful and even the humour or the disgust, like, the nature of the narrator is quite, I don't know, informal but formal at the same time. I don't know, I think you should just give it a read before this review becomes miles too long. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have read it, do you agree? Have you even heard of this author? And I don't know, pick up a book that you didn't expect you were going to read and try it.